Hi, Room 5 Superstars. Let's say good morning to each of our friends. Good morning, Aubrey. Good morning, Violet. Good morning, Ruslan. Good morning, Jacob. Good morning, Mateo. Good morning, Loretta. Good morning, Kai. Good morning, Jimena. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Monty. Good morning, Kaylee. Good morning, Herson. Good morning, Avery. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, Sive. Good morning, Luna. Good morning, Antonio. Good morning, Sebastian. Good morning, Santiago. Good morning, Dempsey. Good morning, RJ. Good morning, Waylon. Good morning, Theo. Good morning, Stetson. And Mabel is here today, so we can say good morning, Mabel. We're going to do a fun game in just a second, and Mabel will help us with that. So she, that's why she's here today, and she hasn't seen you in a couple days. She missed you a lot. To play this game, we need to remember our digraphs. S and H squished together say shh, like sheep. T and H squished together say like thorn. C and H squished together say ch, like chick. So we're going to play the Hokey Pokey, and I'll be telling you some things to put in that start with those sounds. Okay, so let me write the first one, and then when we get to that part, I'll ask you to read it. And I'm going to underline the digraph to make it a little bit easier. And then Mabel will show us where that part of our body is. The Hokey Pokey is a little song that you sing, and it tells you to put a part of your body in and out and in and out. So here's the first part of our body. Think about what it could be. I see that C and H say... Ch, ch, ch. So this word is ch, in, chin. So the Hokey Pokey goes like this. You put your chin in, you put your chin out, you put your, here's her chin, chin in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Next time it will not be chin, it'll be a different word. This one is much longer, so take a minute to see if you can figure out what part of your body this is. I have the digraph underlined. It's the SH sound. We know SH says shh, shh, shh. Shh, ald, eh, er. It's a long word. The word is shoulder. Here's your shoulder. And Mabel's shoulders are here. And another shoulder here. You put your, do it with Mabel. Get ready to put your shoulder in. Put your shoulder in. You put your shoulder out. You put your shoulder in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. All right, we have two more body parts. This one has a very funny spelling. I'll underline the digraph. What does T and H say? This one, I'm not going to show you the chart. See if you can remember. It says thumb. Thumb. It's just thumb. I don't know why that silent B is there. Thumb. Mabel doesn't really have a thumb, but we can imagine that it's here or here. Here's our thumbs. You put your thumb in, you put your thumb out, you put your thumb in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. 
And our very last word, this one is much easier to sound out. It rhymes with chin. It's sh in shin. Shin is like above your foot. It's like right here. It really hurts if you hit your shin. Okay, so ready? We're doing the word shin. You put your shin in, you put your shin out, you put your shin in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. So that game is fun to play with any body part. Um, but today I wanted to work on our digraphs. So you could do it if you were playing again at home with those same things. We did our chin, our shoulder, our thumb, and then our shin down by our foot under our knee. And maybe you can even think of some other body parts that have digraphs in them. Now I want to move on to this book, Sophie Squash. We're going to read this again. And I'll put Mabel back over here so she can read. And look who came to listen to the story with Mabel today. <gasps> who is it? What was this character's name from yesterday? This was so, I mean, this was Bernice. Bernice is the name of a squash. That's the type of plant that that is. And there was another character. This is Bernice. Who is this? This is the little girl, Sophie. And what was the title of this book? Sophie's Squash. Great. So today when we read, I'm going to ask you some questions because you've already read this book one time, so you're pretty familiar with it. Sophie Squash, written by Pat Zitlow Miller, illustrated by Anne Wilsdorf. One bright fall day, Sophie chose a squash at the farmer's market. Her parents planned to serve it for supper, but Sophie had other ideas. It says that her parents wanted to serve it for supper. What does supper mean? It's like another word for dinner. They were going to cook the squash for dinner. It was just the right size to hold in her arms. Just the right size to bounce on her knee. Just the right size to love. I'm glad we met, Sophie whispered. Good friends are hard to find. At home, Sophie used markers to give her squash a face. Then she wrapped it in a blanket and rocked it to sleep. What is Sophie pretending that this squash is? She's pretending it's a toy or a little baby. When it was time to make supper, Sophie's mother looked at the squash and she looked at Sophie. And then what did mom do on this page? I remember that we talked about, I can see squash in her cookbook. She's looking at a squash recipe, but she does something else. She doesn't cook the squash. Instead, she, can you remember? She calls to order a. Pizza, right. And this is where Sophie says, I'll call her Bernice. And then mom says, I'll call for a pizza. After that, Bernice went everywhere with Sophie to story time at the library, to visit other squash at the farmer's market, and to practice somersaults by the garden. They're both flipping through the air. Every night, Sophie gave Bernice a bottle, a hug, and a kiss. Well, we did hope she'd love vegetables, Sophie's mother told her father. Shh. Here's our digraph, Sophie said. Bernice is sleeping. Sweet pea, Sophie's mother said one morning as they made blueberry waffles. Bernice is a squash, not a friend. If we don't eat her soon, she'll get mushy and gross. Let's bake her with marshmallows. Won't that taste yummy? Don't listen, Bernice, Sophie cried. The 
That afternoon, Sophie's father took her shopping. Sugar beet, he said. Bernice is a squash. Why don't you pick a nice toy to play with instead? Does Bernice pick a different toy? Did she like the trucks? No. Did she like the dolls? No. Sophie clutched Bernice tightly. No thanks, she said. I have everything I need. After supper, Sophie's parents called a family meeting. Bernice napped in Sophie's lap. Why don't we donate Bernice to the food pantry before she rots, her father suggested. Sophie shook her head. Bernice will last forever. So let's look at that picture. How's Sophie feeling? She looks like she's kind of worried and upset. She's worried her parents will take Bernice away. And she does not want that to happen. Yesterday we wrote about your opinion, if Sophie should be allowed to keep Bernice or if she should have to get rid of her. I wonder what your opinion was and what your reason was. Bernice seems a little blotchy, said Sophie's dad on the way to the library one day. She looks perfect to me, Sophie replied. At story time, some kids pointed and stared. What's that spotty thing, a boy asked. Her name is Bernice and she's a squash, Sophie said, with freckles. Maybe Bernice should stay home next time, Sophie's mom suggested. Why, Sophie asked. She wasn't the one being rude. Why does her mom think the squash should stay home? What do you think? Why would mom say maybe she should stay home? Is it because these kids were being mean to her? That's what I think. Yeah, maybe she's thinking other kids are being mean to Sophie because they don't understand why she loves that squash so much. Still, as winter neared, Sophie noticed changes. Bernice seemed softer and her somersaults lacked their usual style. Visiting friends will cheer you up, Sophie said. Hmm, what time of year is it? Fall, they told us as winter neared. I know winter's right after fall. At the farmer's market, squash were everywhere. Firm, shiny squash. What keeps a squash healthy, Sophie asked a farmer. It's simple, really, he said. Fresh air, good clean dirt, and a little love. Well, Sophie thought, I have all that. So what is Sophie thinking now? Well, I think she was getting a little worried that her squash is getting sick. It's getting mushy and speckled spots on it. And so she asked somebody who's good about growing squash what they need to be healthy. Now, do you remember what she does with the squash? I think this is where she puts it in the ground. At home, Sophie cleared leaves from Bernice's favorite spot. She made a bed of soft soil, tucked Bernice in and kissed her goodnight. Get better, Soph, she whispered. That night, while Sophie slept, the wind whistled and tiny snowflakes fell. So now, do, what season is it? Do you think it's spring? No. What about summer? Fall? I think it's probably turning to winter now, right? Winter is when we usually see snow. When she awoke, the world was covered in white. Do you think Bernice is cold out there, Sophie asked her mother. I'm sure she's warm and cozy under her snow blanket, her mother replied. She was still there. Oh, Sophie gazed out the window all morning. She was still there in the afternoon when her father came home with a surprise. You need a new friend, he said. Who is the new friend Sophie's dad brought? It was a fish. Do you remember the fish's name? Ace. Meet Ace. Ace was nice but boring. He just swam around and around in his bowl. 
But during the long winter, Sophie discovered that Ace was a superb silent reader who did fabulous flip turns. And he always listened politely when she talked about Bernice. Bernice was great at keeping secrets. That's what she's saying. She mentioned that the fish is a superb silent reader. Do you think that's true? Probably not. Fish don't really read, right? But they do stay nice and quiet. When the snow finally melted, Sophie rushed to the garden. The only thing there was a small green... What's that word for a tiny plant? Sprout. Yeah, it looked strangely familiar. Why does this plant look familiar to Sophie? Why does she recognize it? It's a squash plant, just like Bernice was. Bernice, Sophie said, how is your winter? So does it still look like winter? What season do you think it is now? I see that like things are just starting to grow. There's the leaves. I mean, the tree is not all full of leaves. This plant is just starting to grow. It's probably spring, like maybe April, when things just start to grow. After that, Sophie, Ace, and Bernice ate lunch together every day. One bright summer morning, some, Sophie somersaulted across her yard, landed by the garden, and stared in disbelief. Why is she staring in disbelief? What does she see? Remember, two baby squashes. This plant is reproducing. Bernice had grown two tiny squash. Well, Sophie told them, you look just like your mom. Soon, Bonnie and Baxter were just the right size for Sophie to hold in her arms and bounce on her knee. Just the right size to love. So was Sophie a good friend to Bernice? How do you know that she was a good friend? What did she do to take care of Bernice? We know she was a good friend because she took really good care of her. She gave her a bottle. She made sure she was cozy. She let her bounce on her knee. She took really good care of her. And do you think she'll do that for her babies, Bonnie and Baxter, too? I think she will too. Okay, so we will read this one more time, maybe tomorrow or maybe Friday. And then I'm going to ask you to tell me a lot of the story while we're reading, okay? Okay, say goodbye to Mabel and to Bernice. See you next time.